Hey everyone and welcome again. And in this really quick video, we are going to learn about Time Editor. So Time Editor is a really good tool for animation and it's really in-depth also. We are just going to scratch the surface of it in this video and in near future, we are going to touch it again. So let's read about it first. So this is the Autodesk Knowledge Center and here it says Create and edit animation sequence with any keyframeable object or attribute in Maya to open the time editor. You can go there, 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 and this is the time editor. Well, they have explained really well and basic stuff, basic stuff. So this is animation clip. These are the keyframes per frame. That's the blend. This layer is turned off and this is the audio and then animation clip again and some keyframes. So too many things to read, let's just jump in Maya. Alright, so now we have a fresh scene set up and let's first go to Windows, Animation Editor and Time Editor. So when you open the Time Editor for the first time, it's gonna give you the outliner of it. So in the outliner, you'll see a composition. So if you've ever used After Effects or Premiere, you'll be pretty familiar with the steps and it's almost the same way, it works the same way. So to use it, first import content from the external file, add selected content from the scene or drag and drop into editor. So first we are going to create something to animate. Let's create a cube. So I'm going to create a polygon cube. Place it here. And in case you're wondering how I got this tool set up, I made a video on it and I'm going to post the link in the description if you want to check it out. This way you can work easily, you can have your animation, modeling, rendering, anything you can think of. All the tools in Maya and your, your shelves can be placed in your custom shelf and you can use them easily. And back to the topic, we are just going to create a key on frame 50, create other key. Now let's say this is our animation and all good, all good. So while we have it selected, we are going to click on this button. It says create clip from selection and our clip is created and now you can see it's not red anymore, it's orange. So it's working through time editor now. It's not your normal keyframe animation now. So as you can see, even if I deselect and select it again, you can't see any keyframes, but the animation is still there. But if I mute the time editor, so this button mutes or unmutes the time editor. You won't have any key here because the time editor is mute. So let's first set up our scene. Okay, that's good. All good. So now, now let's go through some of them. So as we saw, this creates a clip from a selection. It's gonna create a pose from the clip. So Let's say I'm on 15th frame. I click this button. It's going to create a pose. So this is just a pose. So if I drag it here and when I go to the frame 59 where I place this pose, it's going to take me back to the place of the pose. So and what else do we have? There we have group or ungroup. We are going to come back to that later. So let's go through them first. So this is a trim option. So in trim, when you select the animation, as you can see, it's from 1 to 50. You can trim it down. So now the animation is of 33 frames. So it's from 1 to 33. Now there's no animation from 33 to 50. Okay, so that's the use of trim function. Then we have scale. It's just going to scale the animation. So it's still the 33 frame animation. So it's still the same. This, you see this location? It's still the same location, just over 80 frames now. So it just scaled it up and it made the animation a bit slow. And this is our loop mode, so it's a good tool. So let's say we have our original animation back. It's a 50 frame animation. Let's delete this pose. We don't need it anymore. And now let's add loop. So normally when we loop things, it goes from point A to point B 
and then from point A to point B again. So it's gonna move like this and then again like this and then again like this. So that's called a loop. So if you create a loop like from point A to point B then to point A again. So it's gonna create an endless loop from ping pong effect. But now what we do is we just stretched it with the loop function and let's say this was our point A, the frame 50 was our point B. So what do you guys think will happen? So technically with the loop function it should go back to the first frame but it starts from point B with the exact transformations you had at the point A. It starts from point B and takes it to point C. So it, it's more like a progressive walk and it's pretty handy in many cases. So when you're creating a walk you can just create one single uh, one single line for a path and then you can you know like loop it and it's gonna progressively take you forward. Now let's turn it back. This is your this is nothing but just a hold mode. So when you stretch it it's just gonna take it to a hold position. Whatever the last frame is it's gonna hold it. And now this. So let's say I am at the first to 20th. Let's say I'm on 20th frame and I press this button. It splits your animation and it splits them in two parts so now I have animation from 1 to 20 and then from 20 to 50 now what's the use of it let's 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 play it so it's still the same right it's just doing it's just in two different clips but it's still the same animation but now because I have the same animation in parts I can use the time editor feature blend so I can drag it inwards and it's gonna give me a blend of both the animations. So when I play it now, slow, fast and slow again. It takes from one animation to the second animation and it blends them together linearly. And these are also trimmed to the start time and trimmed to the end time. So if I place my cursor here and trim it, selecting it, it's gonna trim it to my cursor. Now let's say you have your blend ready. Now this is my final animation. I want it this way, slow, fast and slow. And let's copy and paste it again. Now we have the same animation again. And now I want them originally. And now I want them in the original place back. So now we have the original animation, the blended animation. Now I want to play them together and I can also create a blend here also. So if I like take it on another track, if it allows me to, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And why are you doing this? Okay, let's move forward with this. Let's let's do it this way. So select all and group it. Now there's a group and it has both the animation layers. So it has the blended mode and then the original mode. Now in this group, I've got all the animation. Now when I press play, I've got this animation, then the original animation. I can again copy and paste the group and blend the group. Now we have animation in this group that's being blended with the animation of this group. So when you play it, it's gonna blend the animation that was at the end of it and gonna blend it with the start of this animation. So when you overlap these animations many times, so it creates layer system. So it's more powerful than you can imagine. So imagine like you have a big scene where your character is walking and then it has to take a turn and then walk again. And then it's also doing some kind of stuff with his hand or something. And you can blend the animations. You can have the speed change. You can have the direction change and it's totally gonna reflect and, and the way you can use it is key, uh, your keys are not uh, like uh, on this mesh so it's still not there so when you bake them and baking is the next part we're gonna learn so when you bake them it's gonna give you the power to make the final animation that you created in the time editor with like uh, so for now you're working with the videos. Let's say these are the clips, these are video videos 
and you can easily cut copy paste blend and do whatever you want with the videos and when you're done with it you can simply just bake them onto the object again so let's go to bake and you can bake to a new clip and it's gonna keep the this keep this thing and create give you a new clip and the track two and you can also create a new clip and delete this delete this delete this and now the function we are going to use is bake to the scene and delete it because after baking we don't need it anymore so we are going to press bake and uh, we have to select it so select it first and then click on bake and delete so now as you can see the animation is gone from the time editor now if we press close and select the object again you see the creek frames now and it's all red again so now it's not being driven with the animation editor now it's in your keyframe so when i press play i've got all the keyframes set according to the way i had them in the time editor so that's just scratching the surface of the time editor so in near future we are going to use it again and have some workflow set with it and maybe that time we'll use a character to show you the power of the time editor again so until then like share and subscribe and keep watching thank you so much